Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 68 Making the Grade During COVID-19. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my mature and responsible co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are we doing this week, Maddie? <clears throat> uh, could be better. <laughs> so this week we were scheduled to do another Q&A session. Uh, we had uh, some scholastic news come out from, from your school and uh, had some... I don't know, concerns, uh, a little bit of drama, and I uh, thought it was worthwhile maybe doing a discussion on this. Uh, we've talked about it already, so nobody's angry, nobody's upset, the world's not going to come to an end or anything like that. Um, so I think it was a interesting life lesson for us, uh, especially given the unusual circumstances. So I want to talk about that a little bit because I think other people may be able to benefit from the lessons learned. And we'll talk a little bit more about where I think those problems came from and, and how we might be able to help in the future and how we might be able to help other students out who run into the same type of issues. So shall we get into it? Sure. All right. So we had an incident this week. We got news from your, uh, what was it your math teacher, your advanced math, advanced math teacher, <clears throat> that you uh, had got a couple of bad scores towards the end of the marking period here. Why don't you tell us about what those scores were and what the significance of those scores were? I got two bad scores on my uh, chapter review and my chapter quiz B, or the second quiz we took. On the chapter review, I got a 70, and on the quiz, I got a 69. And, um, and during the fourth marking period, our grade scale changed to where classwork um, and homework were more were worth more than quizzes and tests. So tests so basically uh so quizzes and tests weren't as important to your grade as they were in the other marking periods due to the uh, closure of our school and classwork counted more than um any than quiz or tests. So ultimately the the bottom line here is this these couple of bad grades while were enough to get you upset are not going to adversely affect your grade that much. Is that correct? Um and there was another uh project that you could have done but elected not to do. Uh, but it sounds like that wasn't going to really make that much of a difference either, correct? No. Now, to balance this out, it's worthwhile to talk about the fact that you've had two other A's in the advanced math class. Your first marking peer was a B, followed by two A's, and then this one. So it's not like this was a disturbing trend. You didn't go downhill. There wasn't anything overly dramatic, right? So you just happen to have a couple of bad grades under unusual circumstances with the whole quarantine and remote learning and everything. 
So it's really nothing to get overly upset over. Now, coming the same week that we got that news, we also got news from your guidance counselor. And your guidance counselor was actually recommending that you take advanced history and advanced science because of how well you're doing in those subjects. Tell us how you feel about that. Well, um, first off, I was kind of shocked with the fact that Mommy had gotten a call from her and um, she told me that my history teacher had actually recommended me for advanced history. And just by looking at my grades for science, she actually recommended that I did advanced science. Now, honestly, I was really jaw-dropped the moment I actually heard both of them. And, like, literally, my jaw dropped. and um, I accepted them, and uh, I'm going to be doing them next year, which will be a new, whole new thing. Well, that's good. So you're taking on a more challenging set of classes next year because you were recommended to do so. It wasn't even like Mommy and Daddy were pushing you to do it. This was, you know, an independent evaluation that came out from your teacher and your guidance counselor. So I think the important takeaway from this is to balance the good with the bad. And I think in this case here, the bad being these two grades is really overshadowed by all this other good that came out of this school year. Um, between the A's that you've been getting, the fact that you were invited to join the National honor society, your teachers and your guidance counselor are recommending you for advanced classes and you got, you know, two less than stellar grades. Now, when you got these grades, you were incredibly critical of yourself. Tell us about your reaction to that. Well, um, I was very critical of myself. Um, I mean, in my defense, there in the quiz, there was, like, this weird problem to where part A came after parts B and C, and the graphing confused me, so... Well, and, and I don't want to dissect the mechanics of the issues that you might have had. I'm, I'm more interested to hear... You know, when you reacted to it, you were very upset about the grades. Let's talk about that and why you were so upset about getting those grades. Well, I mean, although a 69 is not considered an F now, it's more of a D. Both the grades I got were Ds. Um, I definitely felt as though I could have done better and that um, I really just let myself down at that point and that it would really bring my grade down so okay so so you were disappointed in yourself you thought you could do better also when i heard that we were going to have a talk about it when you got home that filled me for, with anxiety and worry for the rest of the day and how did that talk go really uh better than i thought you didn't yell at me and how often does daddy yell at you not very often. Right. What did we do? We sat down, we talked, we tried to figure out what the problem was. And work the problem. And work the problem, right? <clears throat> so this kind of goes back to what we were talking about in last week's podcast about you need to treat yourself more compassionately. You're very hard on yourself. I totally get the fact that you were disappointed. You have a very high standard for yourself. But you don't want to get to the point where you're getting yourself visibly upset because that's just going to discourage you, right? So we need to look at these positives and these negatives. And I think the news just this week alone between the recommendations for the advanced classes versus these two less than stellar grades, I think the positive news came out on top there, don't you? So let's look at it that way. You know, treat yourself compassionately. Balance the good with the bad. Learn from your mistakes. So if there's, and this is what we tried to do yesterday when we talked about this. So what did we learn? Now we can kind of talk about the specifics of 
the quiz itself. What did you learn from exploring these mistakes and these problems so far? Well, I learned if there's any other, if there's any, um, if a teacher gives you extra credit, do it. If you um, don't understand a problem of the quiz, um, try and spend a bit more time on it just so that you can get it right. And if you don't understand something, um, you you can. I forgot what I was going to say. You can always ask for help. Yeah. You know, don't ever be afraid to ask for help. The teachers are there to help. The your parents are here to help. These are difficult circumstances. And in our next segment, we're going to kind of talk about how operating under these quarantine conditions with schools shut down are difficult for teens because there's a lot of things that you're missing out on that help that learning process. So, but I think overall, you did pretty good. And I think we need to work on the compassion side of things. And we have to worry about working the problem. Don't worry about having a talk with daddy. Because that talk with daddy ultimately comes down to what do we need to do to solve the problem? I'm not going to come home and yell at you. I'm not going to beat you or punish you or anything like that. That's not how daddy works. When there's a problem, I'm a problem solver. When there's a problem, let's work the problem. Let's come up with a solution. Right? So you don't have to worry about me coming home from work and, and having a talk. That talk is going to be a positive talk. It's always going to be a positive talk. You know, I have enough respect for you as an individual to know that you're doing your best. If something goes off the rails for a little bit, we just help you get them back on track. You're a pretty responsible 13-year-old. You're very intelligent. You exceed my expectations. And once in a while, a bad grade comes along. Let's figure out how it happened. Well, let's try to work that problem. Nobody expects you to be perfect. So you shouldn't expect yourself to be perfect. Okay? Yeah, you actually said that if I was perfect, that would scare you. It, it would. It would. So now that we got that out, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk about some of the side effects of working remotely with school under COVID-19 conditions, COVID-19 conditions. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, Guild Lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. All right, so uh, let me adjust your camera angle here. We kind of fixed that a little bit during the break. There we go. So COVID-19... So we've been in quarantine for several months now, and that's had a significant effect. It has, an, has had uh, an effect scholastically. It's had an effect mentally. It's had an effect physically on people. Um, and, I, and I suspect or I, I attribute some of that effect to the issue that you had with your grades here because largely your teacher is absent. You know, it's not the same type of situation as you had before. Yeah. Um, so before I get into the details of this article, give me a rundown of what it's like homeschooling now or remote schooling. And what what what's different for you and what, what do you find to be difficult about it? 
Well, one thing I've definitely noticed, um, my routine was I go to bed a little later, I wake up pretty early, I go and eat um, breakfast, I brush my teeth, I put on a jacket and socks if I didn't already have one, some on, and then I would go to my computer and do whatever work I needed to do for the day. And around 12 o'clock, me and mommy would break for lunch. And then afterwards, if I still had schoolwork, I would go back to that. And then when I was done, um, I would let mommy know. And then I would just take some leisure time. Okay, fair enough. But there was one thing I did notice that, was go that um, actually changed my schedule. I was getting a lot lazier as the months went on. I remember I used to bring my um, laptop down to the kitchen, and after lunch I would take a break and do some Just Dance to get active. But as the months went on, I stopped doing Just Dance, and eventually I stopped bringing my computer down to the kitchen, and I just worked in my bedroom. So tell me how communication uh, with your teacher worked. Did you have direct communication? Were you doing conference calls or Zoom calls? Was it just email? Was the teacher just posting assignments? Like, how was the teacher teaching the classes during this time period? Oh, were you? But, well, a big part of our learning came from Google, uh, Google Classroom. And when they would post assignments, there was, like, two different comment sections. There were class comments or private comments that was only you and the teacher. And whenever I had a question, I would go to the private comments on the certain assignment that I had the question on and ask them. And uh, depending how long it took for them to reply, I would get a reply a little bit later. And then if I needed to reply again, then I would. So was the teacher actually doing instructional videos was she lecturing? Was there any kind of direct interaction with the teacher as you guys went through lessons? Or were you basically just told, here, go read these pages or go do these assignments and then report them back in? Well, I mean, it was different with all with my, all my teachers. Most of them never really did any video thing other than my art teacher. She, I think, was the only one who did that. But my math teacher um, gave us two assignments each day. One was to read and take notes on pages, answer a few questions, and then do an assignment and submit it. And then the other one was to do an Ed Puzzle video and answer the questions online. Ed Puzzle was basically a thing that my math and science teacher used when we would watch a video based on the current uh, sub, um, I don't know, subject we were learning at that time. And then there were questions that you had to answer while watching the video. Um, so Ed Puzzle was basically a thing that my math teacher and science teacher used uh, to help us better understand the lessons they were teaching us. So now how does that differ than if you were sitting in class? Does the teacher, if you're in class, does the teacher normally get up in front of the class and go over lessons and lecture and teach? Or was it more hands-off, kind of like this distance learning? Um, with my math teacher, with most, well, with my math teacher, it was most of the class was with um, actually lecturing us about the lesson. And then we'd have a bit of time, we'd complete an assignment, and then we had a bit of time to do our homework. But well, most of the class in consisted of her teaching us and lecturing us. So having gone from that to really what had to have been a, a huge culture shock of this distance learning where you didn't have that hands-on lecturing and teaching from the teacher, how did that affect you and how did that affect your ability to pick up new concepts and to understand you know, let's just confine it to math at this point, but how did that affect your ability to understand the math lessons that you were dealing with at that point when you were doing it remotely? Well, a good example of this was when I was learning about square roots. At first, I had no idea what they were talking about. I had no idea what square roots were. It was like the beginning of, the, of our 14th lesson, I think, and... I had no idea what square roots were, and I had no idea how to take notes on them. 
So I had to turn to mommy for that one, and she was able to help me out with that. Um, she was able to decode it in a way that I wasn't able to see before. So uh, that was one of the lessons I needed her help on. So it sounds like you and, and probably a lot of students out there supplemented what the teachers were giving you with parental guidance, and the, the parents really took on the roles of the teachers. Yeah. Is that a fair assessment? I think so, yeah. Especially if, like, your parents are home and you don't know the answer to something that your teacher would have told you before, I definitely think uh, the students would definitely seek their parental guidance um, for that help. Understood. Okay, that's and that's kind of, <clears throat> I guess kind of what I was getting at was that these grades aren't necessarily reflective of you and your effort. They're, a reflective, they're reflective of a system that broke down during this whole process. You weren't getting the instruction you needed. You didn't have the resources that you needed to go and get the help that you wanted. You were basically left to fend for yourself, and, you know, these two low grades were probably a direct result of that. So, But the one thing I did want to talk about <clears throat> was uh, how COVID-19 affects students, and, and, it, and it affects them in a lot of different ways. Um, the research I did today comes from a website called childandadolescent.org. And it was a very interesting workup because they went into detail about different grades and stuff like that. But I sort of grabbed just the highlights and I wanted to talk about this and see if these things that they're saying affected students actually had the same negative effect on you. So the one thing they talk about is disrupted routines. Um, and you've mentioned that already. They say school provides structure and routine to the lives of students. Following the routine of getting up at a certain time, going to classes at specific times, and coming home at a certain time provides a sense of normalcy in their lives. The predictability of knowing that third period math class follows second period history class allows students' brains to focus on academic content. When schools closed due to COVID-19, Students lost this structure and routine. Do you feel that you had that, that structure and routine in place and that it was helpful to you? And, and if, well, do you feel like you had that in place prior to the shutdown? Yes, I definitely um, feel like that. I definitely like took account to how you mentioned that you knew that second period history was before third period math and it basically got our minds to real to get ourselves prepared for <clears throat> the um, different the uh, subject that we were learning at that um, at a certain time or in a certain period. So I definitely feel as though it's affected me in that way. So since working, you know, with school from home remotely. Did you or do you try to keep to some sort of routine where you're doing things for a certain period of time? You set a timer, you do this work, you've, the timer goes off, it's time to go to the next class. Did you try to keep that same structure or was it just scattershot approach where you're going off and, and doing, you know, getting all the low hanging fruit and saving all the difficult assignments for later? Like what was your methodology? Well, in the beginning I had the intention of splitting my day into periods for the different amounts of work I had. Um, and when it came t and as the months went on, I kind of drifted away from that kind of uh, time uh, period because I noticed when I was doing math, it took me a lot longer than the time I had. And, but for some reason, even after I abandoned that schedule, I still went on with math first. Just, I don't know, it was, I just kept doing it like that. And also my teachers posted at different times. So that also kind of screwed it up. Okay. Well, one of the other things that they talk about is that when schools shut down, children or students were sent home 
with packets of assignments and basically told they need to complete them, but it was up to them to decide when and in what order that they do the assignments. And some kids at first thought the greater amount of freedom and choices felt great. You know, there was one quote saying, you know, finally I, I get to decide what I want to do. Um, but in a short time, they fall behind, they become distracted. There's other things, more desirable things to grab their attention. Did you get a sense of, um, I don't know, freedom when you, when you started to work from home or, or was, did you immediately start to miss that structured approach? I mean, I can't. I kind of had that structured approach, like, okay, I know what I need to do in this amount of time, and when I have the free time, I can work on other stuff that I um, need to do. So in the beginning, I definitely knew that I didn't fall behind, um, everything seemed okay, until my attention span got the best of me. My attention span started getting lower um, as the assign as the... As I kept getting assignments, I kind of got tired, especially I definitely noticed it when I was doing math because I was doing basically the same thing over and over, just with different lessons, and it honestly started to get, my attention span started getting a little lower. And that, that makes perfect sense. You get bored doing the same thing over and over, and you're not challenged, and which is ironically exactly why mommy and daddy wanted you to go into the advanced math class so that you were challenged because we didn't want you getting bored. Uh, the next thing that they actually talk about that kids are missing out on is social interactions. Uh, most students, for most students, school isn't just about academics. And we've talked about this as well. It's also about social interactions. Many friendships start by sitting next to each other in class. Um, groups of friends eat lunch together every day. Uh, their interactions with teachers and other school personnel teach young people to interact with non-family authority figures. In the hallways and classrooms of their school, young people are exposed to a variety of different cultures, perspectives, and ways of living that may be different than their own. And you're missing out on all this stuff. How, how much of an impact is that lack of social interaction having on you, both academically and mentally and mood-wise? Well, even when I was in school, I wasn't very social. Um, when, at lunch, I only really had one friend that I sat with, and that was it. I never really talked to anyone else at my table. Um, so, um, I did talk to some people during some of my classes, like there was this one girl I sat next to in my history class, um, who every day, we, um, especially by, as the, as we got later into the school year, when we were still in school, we started saying hello to each other, um, when we got in and sat next to each other, so, um, I guess it was kind of that whole most friendships start by just sitting next to each other in class. I guess it was that kind of thing. Um, and I mean, I, I also walked, like, my friend Mariah, who I've known for many years now, um, she, we would meet up at my locker if I needed anything. It would mainly be my jacket because it was still cold out by the time we were in school. And we would walk to our buses together and talk about how our days were, um, so I guess I do miss going to lunch, saying hi um, to the girl in my history class, and um, walking to the buses with Mariah. Uh, I guess those were the social interactions for me that um, I kind of missed out on. Okay, so it does sound like there is <clears throat> some impact there, but it doesn't sound like it's dramatic. Not as dramatic, Which I think still. is good. I mean, you know, I joke around with the people at work all the time, right? you know, I'm still going into the office. Most of my staff in New Jersey here is working remotely. And they ask me on a regular basis, you know, how are you holding up? How's quarantine going? And my response to them was, well, I was an introvert and antisocial to begin with. Really hasn't changed all that much. You know, <laughs> I didn't talk to a lot of people during the day and I still don't talk to a lot of people during the day. So, 
You yeah. Know, if you're not overly social, it's it's not that big of an impact. I yeah, think. I definitely think the introverts during quarantine at this point, nothing really changed for them. They never really talked to a lot of people. And right. if anything, they're happy that they have more time at home because now they don't have to socialize with the people they don't want to socialize with or see the people that they really don't want to see at school. And now they have more time to play games. Draw, watch their favorite TV shows, watch more movies. Yeah, I mean, I've got less people bothering me in my office. The traffic levels are better. Um, I go out to lunch. I always went out to lunch by myself, so I'm not missing out on anything there. So, you know, for me, it's not that big of a big of a deal. But, you know, there's people like Mommy, and Mommy's a very social person. She has her things that she does with her friends. And the inability to get out of the house and do that, I think, wears on people that are that are more social. So fortunately, it's not having that negative an impact on your schoolwork. The last thing that they talk about kids missing out on uh, is one that probably, again, is not going to have a huge impact on you, and that's extracurricular activities. Uh, extracurricular activities were affected by school closures. Many students enjoy participating in sports, music, school plays, you know, robotics, and a ver variety of other activities. Participation in these activities helps students to be more proactive, uh, ha help to be more attractive applicants to colleges, un universities, and future employers, although most of that we don't have to worry about at your age. More importantly, participation in these activities is an important part of a student's identities. Now, you've not been involved in extracurricular activities outside of, you know, band, really, right? Yeah. Um, we missed out on, on the getting into the different clubs this year, but we were hoping to get into them next year. I don't know how that's going to work out with all this stuff. Yeah. So while this might not have that negative an impact on you because you weren't that involved in extracurricular activities, there are kids out there, and I'm sure you know kids in school who are in every group. And you know, when one sport ends, they get into the next sport. They, you know, they're in all kinds of things, and that's a lot of lot to do with who they are and the type of student that they are. So, you know, it's worthwhile to keep in mind the impact that that has on the students. Yeah. Um, so. That's sort of what we're, we're facing right now. And I wanted to throw that information out there because it's important for you to recognize that even though you may have gotten some bad grades, that you didn't get them under ideal or even normal circumstances. So you're as much a victim of COVID and the impact that it's had on you scholastically with those grades as someone who got sick from the disease too. So it is having a negative impact. So I don't want you, again, this goes back to the whole compassion thing. I don't want you to be so hard on yourself to think that you're a failure for getting these two bad grades because those grades came as a byproduct of this very unusual, very disrupted routine that you've been forced to endure. So it's important to keep that in mind. Um, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and we're, we're going to talk about how to bounce back from bad grades. Uh, and some of this, it, it's a, a lot of it's timing, but some of it has to, you know, it, it will apply in this specific case, but a lot of it in more general terms. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. So 
So bouncing back from bad grades. Now I'll I'll offer a bit of a confession here. Uh, I had bad grades when I was in school too. Um, ironically, math was probably my weakest subject. Um, so some of these uh, suggestions here probably would have helped me. The uh, website I use for this section of the research was called the PrincetonReview.com. And again, this dealt more with college level stuff, but I pulled the stuff out that was really relevant to any grade level. Um, first thing they say is bad grades. It happens, right? Not everyone gets perfect grades. Uh, you may show up for a test or a quiz one day and you may just be having a bad day. You may have been up late. You may not be feeling good. There may be something going on in your life and you don't score very well. Fortunately, your entire grade doesn't come down to one grade. So it's not the end of the world. The next thing they talk about is one poor test or one poor month or quarter doesn't sink your GPA, your grade point average. Uh, you can still end the semester where you want to be if you take action. And there are certain actions that you can take. And the one that they tell you to take first and foremost, which is one that we do frequently, is check your grades online. And they say don't just look at the letter grade really dive into the grade. Take a look at each assignment and see if there's something you can do to improve your score. Some teachers will allow you to resubmit certain assignments. Some teachers will give you the ability to get extra credit if they know that you're trying. Um, you know, are you missing crucial assignments that you could redo? Maybe you forgot to turn something in. Maybe you had a technical issue like you have with your band stuff where you went to submit it and it didn't go through. Um, maybe you could correct math problems on an assignment or on a quiz and maybe get half credit. Point is, if you don't ask, you won't, you'll never get it. So it doesn't hurt to ask, which you did. You know, you asked your, your math teacher if you could uh, do that extra credit. Uh, have you ever reached out like that in the past to teachers where you think you were um, maybe not doing so well, because I know you had some issues in the first marking period with math. Do you feel comfortable enough reaching out to a, a teacher and asking for extra credit or asking to improve yourself? Well, I find myself now at this point when I just ask them, to, like, not in person, easier than when I would ask them in person because, one, I felt like I was bothering them, and two, I felt like it was simple enough and I should have understood it. So, yeah. Well, they do go on to say that, talking about extra credit, most teachers love when students are proactive. So if you go to your teacher and you ask for more or you ask for ways to improve or or explain that you're having difficulty and you ask for help, a, a teacher is going to be far more receptive if you come to them with it than if you don't and your performance drops off. Because then the teacher doesn't know what the problem is. The teacher might think, well, well, you know, she's not paying attention or she's not getting enough sleep because she's dozing off in class or she's passing notes or she's talking to her friends. The teacher has to kind of piece things together at that point in time. But when you come to the teacher and you say, Miss So-and-so, you know, is there any extra credit we can do? I know I didn't do so well on this quiz. Um, I'm having trouble with this particular concept. I just, I'm having trouble with square roots. Is there, is there any additional help I can get? Is there any other reference material? And the teachers are there to help you. That's the number one thing you have to remember. It's their job for you to learn. If you don't learn, then they're not doing their job. And it reflects poorly on them. Teachers' evaluations are based on their students' scores. So they don't want kids to come out of their class with bad grades. They want you to learn. They want you to know the concepts. So a teacher is going to be very interested in helping you. You're not bothering them. Don't ever think you're bothering your teacher by asking stuff like this. Um, an extra credit is something that they can always tack on and 
chances are they will and they'll make it available to other kids. So when you ask, you could be helping other kids who need that extra credit too. That's the other thing to keep in mind. Um, the next thing they talk about is what's coming up this semester. Is there going to be a major report or a project or a test that will impact your grade? So sort of feel out what's coming up. Uh, make sure you're clear on what you need to do to really ace these final assignments and raise that grade. So maybe if you had asked more questions about the project that was an optional project, maybe we would have gotten a better understanding of how important it was and how much it was going to help the grade and if there's anything else that we could do. Um, does your teacher normally provide you with extra credit or these optional projects to help raise your grade? Do you get that a lot in school? Uh, no, actually not. I mean, my teacher would always have, my math teacher at least, would always have, like, whenever you did a test or quiz, there was always, like, an extra credit question worth however many points to help boost up your grade that you would be able to do. Um, and um, it would definitely help some it would definitely help me whenever I would do them because no matter how many points I was able to get, it would definitely help raise my grade up. If I didn't do as well as uh, if I didn't get a perfect grade on it, then it would have definitely helped me raise my grade for it. Um, um, but going online, there wasn't a lot of extra credit, and the projects were not optional back and for the three marking periods, so. So you, would, you normally would to avail yourself for the extra credit when it was available. Is that correct? Yeah. I see. Okay. Well, they go on to say, create a solid action plan. Uh, they say, find out, um, you know, you don't want to redo or update old work at the expense of new work. So even if you can go back and redo an old quiz, you might not want to do that if it's going to affect anything new that's coming across your desk. Create a plan that ensures you're staying on top of upcoming deadlines while you take care of work that you might have slacked earlier in the semester. So if you get a chance to make up work, take advantage of that. But make sure you know what's coming up and make sure you've got time scheduled for that. So again, one of these things where if you're dealing with extracurricular activities, make sure you balance that out well. Don't, don't be taking on projects or assignments that you can't do because you know your schedule doesn't permit them. So that's important too. Uh, and school breaks and vacation days may be a great time to uh, get some of those projects off your plate. You've been very good about managing and budgeting your time that you have off um, during the school year. And I think that lack of structure may be having a negative impact now because, you know, now you're just assignment, 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 you get it done and you're done. And by noon, you know, school's over for you. Um, so it's, in la that lack of structure, I think, is having an impact on the scheduling abilities. Uh, and the last thing that they have here is one that I don't think you're anywhere close to needing, but there's nothing wrong with it. And that's to consider getting a tutor to finish out the semester. So if you are struggling with things uh, and you've acted as a tutor to other kids in the past and you've helped them with things. So even if it's another peer in your class and you're having trouble with square roots, for instance, um, this is why it's important to be social with your, your fellow students because there are people that know things and can comprehend things better than you can and they can help you. You can help them, they can help you. It's a two-way exchange. Um, is there a lot of tutoring that happens in your school? Um, well, there is POP that we had, which I completely forget what it stands for now. Um, yeah, that. <laughs> Where when we would go to our homeroom and if we ever needed to make up a test or needed help from a certain teacher, we were able to get a pass and go to that classroom so that we could get the extra help we needed. So the possibility is there to, to get that extra help, and that's, that's important. And I think a lot of kids need to take a look at that option 
Um, but really a lot of it comes down to, to just hard work, you know, putting in the effort, putting in the time, which it's never been anything that you've had an issue with. And that's why I'm pretty sure that the, the grades that you got that were less than stellar this marking period, uh, 90% of that can probably be attributed to the circumstances. Uh, it's very uncharacteristic for you to get something like that. There isn't a demonstrable pattern of this that's emerging here. You've, you you had one quiz and, and a chapter summary that was bad. So I wouldn't be overly concerned, and I'm not. You know, as, as your father, I'm not concerned about you academically at this point in time. Um, so you need to not have that that cloud hanging over you. I know it still bothers you, but you kind of have to realize, okay, this problem derived from the fact that I don't have a teacher. You know, I mean, you don't. Your teacher is really just someone who's providing assignments right now. And that's not a dig on the teacher. That's a dig on really a system that failed the students. They weren't prepared for this type of remote learning. Um, I think a lot of lessons are being learned from this. And I think a lot of adjustments coming out of COVID-19 are going to be made that will make sure that this type of thing doesn't happen again, that we don't get caught unprepared again. Um, this is an extremely rare situation. I mean, never before the country's gone through wars, gone through world wars and hasn't shut down like this. So this is something that nobody could have possibly prepared for. And everyone is, who's involved is doing the best they can at this point in time. I have no doubt about that. It's just you can't avoid some of the impact from it. So don't be so hard on yourself. Uh, that was all I had. We'll come back. We'll get your closing remarks. And then we'll bug people to subscribe to our podcast. Go for your closing remarks. Alrighty, so to every student out there who is deaf, um, who was affected by uh, the remote learning and the and COVID nineteen situations? Just know that you're not the only one. I definitely forgot about that when I um went through these two bad grades. But uh, like my dad said, don't go, don't be too hard on yourself if you're like me. Uh, bad um bad grades do happen, but you will be able to bounce back from them. Okay, very good. Uh, that was all we had for today. Um, uh, we would invite you to subscribe to us on any or all of the following if you're inclined to. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcast, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and Castro. You can reach out to us via email at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get all of our videos up on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash insights into things. You can hit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Our audio podcasts are available for subscription at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. We stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Or you can get links to all of those things at our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. All right, that is it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. And we're out.